purpose in doing this is this class tonight is to raise your productivity and your performance to really heighten that. And the reason why that's so important is, well, I'll say it this way. The only reason why that would be important is if you're doing what you love. Because no one really wants to be more productive at things that they hate doing. <laughs> Unless, of course, that thing that you don't like doing is a must at this moment. And your productivity in that field or in that industry, in that, that job, that J-O-B, might be needed to free up some time for you to do the things that you actually do enjoy doing. That's okay, too. But either way, uh, it's just kind of I'm going to talk to you tonight. I'm going to give you a bunch of different techniques and uh, some different things that you can practice and begin to implement in your life. It's just going to raise your productivity. I guarantee it will raise your productivity. The reason why I know it will is because it raises my productivity. I do these things every day. I have done them every day for a minute. And it uh, is a huge benefit. It's been a huge benefit in my existence. I know it will be in yours too. Before I jump into those techniques, I want to do two things. I want to kind of lay out for you what mindfulness is because I think a lot of times we're missing the uh, what mindfulness is. We hear mindfulness and we immediately make the assumption that it's some sort of uh, monk up in the tub, some Tibetan monastery somewhere in great deals of meditation. But mindfulness is just this. It's you consciously being aware of something. This is, all, this is all mindfulness is. It's raising your conscious awareness. And so you can walk without thinking about walking, or you can be mindful of the walk, and the walk becomes heightened. The experience of walking becomes more joyous, and you'll begin to notice more things around you. For those of you that have practiced walking meditation or still practice walking med meditation, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And so you can do anything without being mindful of it. And the truth is, the sad truth is, right, that most human beings aren't very mindful of what they're doing. They're kind of just going through the monotonous motions of existence. And none of us want to go through the motions. We don't want to just go through the motions. And yet, if I'm being real with you, there are still moments for me that I'll even find that I'm still just going through the motion. It could just be one task. It could be me sending emails or producing a video or um, even sometimes a coaching session. And I'll find that I'm just going through the motions. I'm like, well, I'll get done. And I'll be like, holy shit. How did I just, how did I just do that? I just, I wasn't even with the person that I was coaching. I'm coaching with somebody in my heart is always to make that person feel like the most important person in the world, loved and valued. And yet I finished the session. I'm like, man, I wasn't even aware of them. My mind was somewhere else. I wasn't mindful of their presence or mindful of my presence. You understand? And so while there is meditation involved, mindfulness is just about raising your conscious awareness. That's all it is. That's all it is. And it's very basic. In it's very basic form. Mindfulness is just about raising your conscious awareness. Okay. So first things first, I uh, hope you have a pen and paper. If you didn't get the memo, I'm going to give you like 30 seconds to grab a pen and paper. And um, I'm going to call on a couple of you guys. Yeah, Beth's like throwing her hands up in there. She, she's hard to do that and drive. It's all good. And Kaylee's kind of difficult to do that and drive. I understand. But, um, oh, well, you, you guys will be all right. Uh, I want to ask you these questions. I want to give you a second to write down the question and a response, or at least just a response to the question. If you want these questions in a document form, I'm actually gonna pop them up later. I'll show, I'll share my screen with you. I'll pop it up later so that you can actually see them. For those in the master class, you actually have access to download these things so that you can actually use them every day or every week, depending on how often you wanna use them or if you wanna use them at all. 
But uh, basically what I want to do right now is I want to do a little hype assessment with you. Because if we're not hyped about life, then what the fuck are we doing? Right? Why are you in, in you know, the, the, there's a passage of scripture in the Bible that says, in him we live and move and find our being. And yet I find it absolutely hysterical that we could say on the one hand and in one breath, in him we live and move and find our being. And on the, in the, in the very next breath or on the other hand, we're not even joyous about finding our being in God. Like, how is that possible, right? Like, no, of course not. If you're going to live and move and, and your life is living and moving in the divine nature, in your original divine nature, then that should be lit. That should be exciting. You should be hyped about waking up in the morning. You should be absolutely stoked about the tasks that lie before you, about the moment that you find yourself absorbed in. Like these are things that you should wake up in the morning and you should be jumping out of bed so excited about life. And so we're gonna do a little hype assessment right now. And so just to find out how, how hyped you really are, how, you know, how hyped you really are. This is stuff that I do with myself every day to remember. I remind myself every day, why am I doing this? What am I excited about, you know? And so let's do this little hype assessment. First, the question is this, what did you do today that was lit? <laughs> What did you do today? You should be able to write down one thing, at least one thing that you did today that was exciting, that was monumental, that was memorable. And if you can't come up with anything, like don't just scribble down, I ate some cereal, you know what I'm saying? Like that, that didn't count. I mean, you can do it if you just want to fill in the blank, but uh, just leave it blank. If you can't, if, if something doesn't immediately like pop up in your mind within the first 20 seconds, just leave it blank. Cause I don't have all day to wait for you. All right. You guys ready? All right. Second question. What three things did you do this past week that were lit? Sometimes I'll go through my days and at the end of the day, I, I go through these questions and sometimes I, I don't, I can't find the one thing that really got me stoked, that really fired me up. I can't find the one thing, but I can look back on my week and be like, there was three major things this week, at least three that I was so fired up about and that kind of uh, flowed over into each day, you know, like it wasn't just a one little moment deal. It was something that I practiced or something that I played with or did throughout the whole week. And I, so I could write the same answer down for multiple days. All right, next question. What three things did you do this week that were fresh or new? Now here's, this is, this question here will really get you, right? Because we get caught up in ruts where we're not looking for new things. Now, it doesn't have to be, like, for instance, if I was a, if as I'm, pl I'm playing right now with, with gymnastics and hand balancing and various other things that I haven't done in, in quite some time. So it's really fresh for me and I'm really enjoying it. But for me right now, the new thing that I played with, like one of the new things that I played with today was just that hand balancing. Like I, I worked on my hand balancing quite a bit. So I'm creating all kinds of new neural pathways and all kinds of beautiful new muscular development, and all kinds of new stuff that's happening in my body and in my mind as a result of this new thing. Um, and it was, it's exciting because it's really fresh. So that can be something new that I continue on with and it can be new for a period of time. But then if I'm practicing it and I'm just on repeat practicing the same thing every day, then it's no longer fresh. I've got to raise the bar. I got to make it fresh every day. So for instance, for you, if you're working out 
what new thing did you add to your repertoire? How, how many more reps did you get today? You know, did you, did you, uh, did you get a new max today? Those are the kinds of things like that I'm talking about. It can be small things that are new. It doesn't have to be like literally something that you've never tried before. Uh, it can be something that you've played with. You've just never done this. You've never hit it to this degree or it's been a long time. Does that make sense? All right. Uh, is anybody coming up? Anybody struggling coming up with three things that you did this week that were fresh? Yeah, that's the norm. It's not, it's not abnormal. How many of you want to be able to each week be like, man, I didn't just kill three things. Like I did, I did like every single day I had new, new things that are memorable that I did. And I'm, my body and my mind are just moving. Like I'm doing things that I'm passionate about and I love. That's why there's the hype assessment. What creative, next question, what creative expressions did you invest your time, energy, and money into this month? I'm gonna give you a month on this one. What creative expressions did you invest your time, energy, and money into? So one of the ways that we can tell how hyped we are about something is when we invest in it. If we're not investing our time and our energy in it, our money in it, the reason why we're not investing it is because we really aren't that stoked about the thing. We're not really all that fired up about this thing. And so we're really, yeah, we, can, we can talk about like we are. But Kevin, if we're not really investing our, those three things, time, energy, and money, then, then you're probably not nearly as stoked as you might think you are about it. Right? It makes sense? Every month, you should have one or two major things that you see and we don't use checkbooks anymore but like you see in your checking account so stephanie's like i do you should be able to look at your banking and and by looking at that banking be able to see the at least one or two things each month that is you are investing financially in for yourself and, and it may, you might not, you're probably not going to get a monetary return on that thing unless the thing that you're stoked about is like invest, like actually investments. But, but um, you know, it can, it could be, it could be clothing because you're wanting to develop a new character. It could be a gym equipment or a gym membership, or, I mean, it could be any number of things. And then if you were looking at our time and our energy, now it gets even more detailed there. So where, Time and energy is harder for us because we don't, we're not logging it. But what are we giving our time, energy, and our money towards? And then um, last question for the little hype assessment is what three things are you stoked about right now? Three things that come to your mind right now that get you fired up, that get you excited. Again, the reason why we struggle with them popping up in our mind is because we're like we can say I can say I'm I'm stoked about um, about when Beth gets home and seeing her later and just hanging out. But the problem is if I'm just used to going through the motions. Oh, hey, there you are. We see each other every day. Then I'm probably not going to be stoked about it. You know, like it won't be. I won't be really fired up about it. Unless you learn some of the techniques I'm going to show you later, that'll help you get that party started inside your mind. All right. Anybody want to share uh, one of one of those things they're they're stoked about right now? What's something you're stoked about right now, Laura? You got something? With her mouth full, maybe I won't call on you, Stephanie. How about you? Yeah, I'm really. Um, even though I'm not working right now. I do have some under the table clients that um, that I'm really excited about the work that I'm doing with them and it expands my knowledge. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. Awesome. Awesome. Beautiful. Mel, what about you, man? What, what's something you're stoked about right now? I'm just learning some copywriting skills. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Cool, man. <laughs> And Laura, we'll go to you for a different one. 
what what's a creative expression <laughs> that you've invested either time, energy, or money in, or all three of the uh, all of the above in? I brought this up last week, but I just feel obsessed with the idea of masculine and feminine energy. Like I just need to read about it, talk about it, practice it. Yeah. Obsessed. So you, are you effect. learning like is, is that's a topic is it stuff that you're, you're learning about obviously you're growing and you're learning about you're excited about I still feel like I'm in the like <clears throat> hunting and gathering and reading and talking I feel like the practicing is coming soon but I can't say that I fully grasp enough to practice yeah okay so but I'm I mean I'm I can't help it. Like I just am like <laughs> hungry. Like I just need to chew on it. <laughs> All right, good, 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 good. All right, cool. All right, now we're gonna go through. I'm gonna give you actually a little a little form and give you a couple more questions here. It's just this is um, called the hype progression. This is a way that we tell how hyped we for us to some questions. Just three questions that we can ask ourselves every day to continue to keep that that uh, flame stoked and uh, continue to keep the hype rolling and moving in the right direction. Um, and just these are questions that I would ask yourself every single day. Again, for those in the master class, you can, the forms are actually downloadable there on the website. What three, three things am I stoked about right now? Question number one. Question number two, while you're writing that down, what is today's edge? What is today's edge? And what I mean by that is for us to continue to see the progression, any progression in our existence, we have to live on the edge of something. If you're working out, you got to live on the edge of pushing yourself just too far. There's a, there's a fine line between going too far and keeping your body in an overly stressed state and living on the edge where you are progressively increasing your muscle mass or whatever it is the goal that you have and so you have to find the edge otherwise what you find is that if you're not living on that edge continually you're kind of just slowly going back to living just going through the motions in that part of your life right so same thing stephanie with what you were saying earlier which i love because you're saying hey i got some new clients i'm learning some new things like it's exciting but how long were you doing massage where you were just, you know, or maybe you never have, but it's, a, it's something that a lot of people slip into. You do a massage, you've gone through the school, you've done it, but you're kind of not really seeking to progress your skills and your techniques and your, your, your connection with your client. And instead you kind of just sink into a place of like, eh, you know, another, another massage, it's just time to, time to do another massage. No one wants to do that, but so many find themselves right there. So living on the edge is vital, like it's key. It keeps things fresh, man. It keeps things exciting. It keeps things um, keeps things really, really beautiful. And then the third question is, what new thing am I going to do or learn this week? What new thing am I going to do or learn this week? You can ask yourself this question every day if you want. What new thing am I going to do or learn today? Sometimes I'll find that my days are so full that I might not have time for something brand new in the sense of like something big, but I can always find, I'll always be able to make time to mindfully appreciate or practice something or learn something new if it's, you know, even if it's just small, to push myself to find something new, to do something new, to experience something new. I mean, so many of us, when was the last time you had a brand new experience that you just haven't had before? You did something that you've never done. When was the last, you know? So these are the kinds of things that just keep life exciting, keeps it fun, keeps it, keeps it hyped up. You know what I mean? So those are, that's your hype assessment and your hype progression. Here, I'm going to pop up. I'm going to share my screen with you real quick. And um, I'm going to give you the hype assessment if i can figure out how to share my screen here we go i am all right so if you didn't write them down there they are there's your three things your hype assessment your hype progression
give you a sec to peek over that if you needed to write something down or if you didn't write it down all the way. I wrote down two things for that question. I didn't raise my hand <laughs> while, while the Go reading ahead. is happening. <laughs> um, <clears throat> one of those was obscene, of course. But the second thing was that I made a bed. I was helping a friend move and she had, I mean, it was like 101 pieces in a box. Uh -huh. I made a bed. You put together Never a done bed. it. Yeah. It was amazing. And then just to see her like crawl in the covers, you know, yeah. a weighted moment. It was amazing. Awesome, man. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. That's great. All right. We're going to slide right into the techniques here. Okay. The first, the first three words you need to, you need to hear and you need to realize and you need to continually use in your life are these simplify, simplify, simplify. We are continually looking for ways to simplify our existence. The, one of the biggest problems, especially with our Western mindset here in the United States, is that we, are very, we live very complex, very busy, complex lives. And the more that we're capable of simplifying in that outer existence, the more simple, I mean, the more easy life is, the more chill life is, the more you'll find that you're actually productive. It actually will raise your productivity enormously to simplify your life. How do we do that? We start, obviously, by cutting the fat. I've talked about this in a few of my videos and things of that sort, but it is essential. Lifestyle Design 101 point is to learn to cut the fat. Ask yourself this question. What do I need to clip to make more room for my passions? What do I need to cut out of my life so that I can make more room for what I'm passionate about, for what gets me stoked? This is huge. This is a big question to ask yourself and spend some time with in your mind because there is always something. You know, I, I, I say this, you've heard me say this probably recently, busy equals lazy. If, we're, if we have a really busy mind, we have to learn how to cut stuff out of the mind the thoughts, the information, so on and so forth, cut the fat that's going on in the mind so that we make room for creativity, for innovation. I mean, it doesn't matter what you're doing. If you're working just a normal factory job, there's always ways to continually improve. If you're working an office job, if you want your productivity to improve, there's ways to improve your productivity and your performance. You just have to get innovative. You have to really uh, stoke that innovation, that creativity inside of us. If you're a stay-at-home mom or dad, my God, you are not, I, listen, man, I tell you right now, I've stayed at home with the kids, right? And man, there are moments like at the end of a, at the end of a long, after, it's amazing how long the day seems when you're just cleaning up shit after your kids all day. And then at the end of the day, you know, you're like, ah, I want to pull your hair out. And you find that you're just on edge. And then you stop and you ask yourself, like, why? Why am I so on edge? Like, I'm just hanging out with my kids today. Why did this put me on edge? And the reason why was because we, our mind was so busy that we didn't make room to mindfully appreciate our children, to really think about our role in their existence. Instead, we were just going through the motions and we were really wanting our own time to do our own thing. This And our mind is so busy that we don't have room for the things that really matter the most. I mean, think about that. How many times have we yelled at the kids because we were watching a TV program and they were being too loud? Like, What really matters the most, the children, is being put on the back burner over some TV show that, guys, you can catch on, you know, Netflix later or something like it's not that valuable but we've all done it and the reason why is because we're so busy in our minds so mindfulness helps actually cut some of that fat in our mind so i'm gonna actually when when i say busy equal lazy i'm i'm immediately drawn to that back to that question what three things are we investing our time our energy and our money into that are that that get us stoked and get us fired up because 
think about your energy and your, your, your time, your money as an investment in yourself. Think about, think about how every bit of energy that you give to something is an investment. Now, would you really give a bunch of energy to what somebody says about you on some social media platform? If you thought in terms of the energy that I'm giving to this thing is an investment in myself, would you really spend, you wouldn't even spend 30 seconds giving any energy to what some person you don't know is saying about you on social media or on the old interweb, right? Like you wouldn't care. You're like, ah, not worth my time. It doesn't get me stoked. It's not getting me fired up, man. I'm not spending any, I'm not investing my, my, my time in that, my energy into that. So think about your time, your energy, and your money in, in terms of investment. You are always investing something. And if we start to think about our energy, the energy that we physically have to give, mental energy and physical energy as an investment, then you should be able to, at the end of every day, be able to look and be like, I invested well today. At the end of this class, I'm actually gonna go through a little checklist with you. And um, it's, it's actually gonna be, uh, it'll be powerful. It'll be just like kind of a daily accountability form that you can use every single day to, to really uh, help hold yourself accountable to some of these things. And then uh, how would, if you, can, if you can find three things that you're investing time in, energy in and money in that aren't bringing like aren't aren't getting you hyped if you can find three things that aren't getting you hyped and you're giving time energy and money to those things what would clipping these three things free up so this is something that i actually ask myself at least monthly i ask myself the question what do i need to cut from my life to free up more time to enjoy my passions, to enjoy the people in my life, to, enjoy, to, to free up time to travel the world, free up time to, you know, what, what, what things do I need to cut from my life? So we're cutting the fat, we're always looking to simplify. One of the most, this, this word simplify is one of the most powerful words that you're going to use to raise your productivity, simplify. You're always looking to simplify things. And even in a single task, if I'm gonna give energy to a task, I want to simplify my mindset by giving all of my focus to that task and not multitasking because then that one task doesn't get done very well. I know you women say you can multitask well and all that, but I think when you're really mindful of the thing that you're doing, right, you're able to really give all of yourself to that one thing and then do the next thing instead of trying to multitask and get them all done at one time. Um, you really give yourself to the one thing that's simplifying the moment, simplifying your mindset in the moment. We live in such a hectic world, but we're always trying to get a bunch of shit done all at the same time. Simplifying the mindset is extremely, it's extremely important. All right. So some of the things we need to clip, we do need to clip on on the reg. I want to talk about those things with you right now. We need to clip uh, distractions in general. There's lots of things that are distracting us. Uh, I, I talk about the one hour rule. I actually do this with my kids. It's something I've implemented in their life. It's something that I do. The first hour upon waking, I don't look at my phone. The only thing that I actually do on my phone for the first hour after I wake up is I do a little mind movie, uh, a little personal mind movie that I make for myself, which is basically affirmations and things like that. I, I spend a lot of time first thing in the morning meditating, visualizing, uh, doing yoga, uh, really giving my energy and time to uh, creating my day. I don't want to give any time. So the first thing in the morning, what we often do is we grab our phones and we're just immediately distracted. We're sitting, sitting down, taking a dump in the morning, you know, waiting for that coffee to brew. And we're just go scrolling through Facebook and, and it really distracts. It sets the tone for the entire day and it distracts us. So, so the one hour rule is really something simple that you can actually do that will raise the productivity. And if you're like, man, I don't have the time in the morning to do that. Wake up an hour earlier. Quit, quit you know, don't be a bitch. Wake up an hour early, you'll be all right. <laughs> and uh, and Stephanie, looked, Stephanie looked a little mad on that one. She's like, hey, I wake up early already. <laughs> is that what that look was? Yeah, I hear you. 
well, sometimes you just got to do it. History makers uh, do some crazy things. Yeah, I'm not working, so I got the time. <laughs> Second thing, schedule your social media. This isn't something you have to do, but it's something I found from my own existence that really raises my productivity. I actually schedule my social media to two or three times a day. Now on the weekend, it's probably a little bit different, but when I have a full day, I'll actually I schedule it like three times a day. I'll do it in the morning. I actually have a social media routine where I go through, I'll check my, my messages, make sure everything, nothing you know, is going on that's, that's super important to me. Then you know, the world hadn't completely fallen apart and, and, and gone haywire. Uh, people think it has, but it really hasn't. And, um, and uh, I kind of, I'll make a post. Um, and then I might check it in the afternoon and then in the evening, that's it. I just schedule my social media. You can, you can do the same thing with your email. It's really important to schedule your email. So one of the things, especially for those that are like CEOs or COOs of large companies I've done some coaching with in the past. And it's really important that you schedule this stuff because you can be really distracted. You're in the middle of a task and you all your email's always going off. There's always an email coming into the inbox. There's always somebody messaging you, texting you, calling you just to start scheduling those things and not trying to respond to every single one as it comes in keeps your mind less busy, less distracted so that you can really focus on the task at hand. Especially if you're working with people, like you're in sales or you're doing anything like that, it is essential that you focus on the, on the person that's in front of you in order to make that sale, right? And or in the case of your stay-at-home dad, my God, you wanna be able to focus on your kids. You wanna be able to give them that time and that energy and that love. You don't want to be sitting there. How many parents aren't even focused on their kids at all? Like the kids are just because we're, we're so addicted to our, to our, our social media, to the emails, to the phone calls, to the texts, to all the things that are happening all the time. And I know for me to just to schedule this stuff has really opened up so much free space in my mind and the time for me to actually be able to really focus on the people and the things that fire me up to be able to focus on, on loving the person that's in front of me or, or really doing that new thing that gets me that's that I'm that's really lit. So uh, those are those are some things that are really powerful. The second thing we need to start cutting from our existence is thoughts that distract. So the three second rule, I'm gonna run over it real quick. I have a YouTube on it as well, but the three second rule basically works like this. If something happens in your life that's a negative thing, somebody's saying something about you. Uh, you got a car accident, you got fired from your job, you didn't make that big sale, something's going wrong. Three second rule is this, you have three seconds to whine, bitch, and moan all you want about it. And then it's time to let that shit go. Because you're giving your energy, you're giving your time, you're investing your energy in something that you don't like somebody's saying something about you and you're giving your energy to that thing you're investing your energy in something you don't like so in other words the return is going to be something you don't like there has not been one of you that have ever gotten into some sort of long i remember back in the day when i used to hang out in the christian circles and uh there was all these facebook battles going on i mean i don't know if they still happen or not because i'm not in those circles at all but there's always these big theological arguments where they're name calling and they're going, I mean, going back and forth and just going, I mean, hard at one another. And I can remember investing time, like I'm talking about like 2012, investing some time and just, just conversing with them or trying to show them a better way. And I'm going to be, I'll be 100% real with you, Dean Delker. Not one time, not one, not one time, did I walk away with a return on investment that was worth it? Not one time did I go to sleep at night, really just tucked in it peacefully, going, you know what? That was so worth, that was so worth the three hours that I gave to that guy that was cussing me out. It, me responding to him, it was so worth those three hours. Um, so no, it was like my mom was just going, I can't believe he said those things. I don't, he just doesn't get it, he's an idiot. So I was actually getting the return on my energy. My energy and time was going into that response and the return that I was getting was a negative, the, the negative vibes that he was emanating, that he was putting off. So the three second rule says this, if you can't control it, let that shit go. 
And the best way to let that shit go is by focusing on what we do want to give our energy to, right? So if somebody says something nasty about you, then I would encourage you to focus on what you can see that's positive in them. Shift the whole thing. So uh, people, as you probably are well aware of, say a lot of things about me a lot of times. Um, some of them's true, some of them not true. And um, they, they have a lot of negative, people have a lot of negative or have had a lot of negative things to say about me. And if somebody, so I'll have people come up to me, even still to this day, I'll still have people message me or come up to me and they're like, oh, is it true what somebody said about you or what I read online about you or this thing? And instead of me giving any time to defending myself or giving inner, in because there's no, there's no investment there for me in that. So instead, I'll literally, they'll be like, hey, did you hear what Matt Spinks said about you? And I'm like, Matt Spinks is such a good boy. I love that guy. Matt's, Matt is incredible. Like, I love it. And, I, and it's genuine. Like, I actually genuinely love Matt. I have no hard feelings towards him. I genuinely love the guy. And so what I'm doing is I'm turning it around and I'm giving energy towards a blessing. You know, blessings and curse will follow you for three and four generations. Like give your energy to the blessings so that that's passed down genetically, that positivity and that blessing and not the negativity that is so filling our world. When we're mindful of energy as an investment, Kevin, think about this. If you're really mindful of giving your energy as an investment, what return do you want? Positive return, positive is going to, get, if you have positive, positive investment, going to get a positive. If you have negative, you're going to get a negative. If you're responding continually to that, to the, the crap that's going on around you. So the three second rule is powerful. The best way to shift your focus away from a mindset that's continually thinking about what somebody else is saying about you is to practice the three second rule, um, which also goes along with just stop caring so much. Why, we, we just need to stop caring so much about what everybody else is doing and thinking. So I've said this a long time. It's none of my business what anybody else thinks of me. So write that down. It's none of my business what anybody else thinks of me. We don't have to, we don't have to get caught up in what everybody else is thinking, what everybody else is saying. It's none of my business. I am, I've literally looked at people that have said, hey, did you hear what so-and-so said? And, I, and I've literally said, no. I didn't. I'm like, no, I'm far too busy fucking enjoying my life to be concerned about what somebody else that is clearly miserable is saying about me. They're obsessed with me and they're writing stories about me. I, I don't care. I'm enjoying my existence and you cannot stop me from enjoying my existence, man. Right? So it's time to just stop caring so much. Uh, third, the third practice, and this is a more skillful practice. A lot of you have been in my mindfulness classes and so this should come a little bit easier to you. And that is simply the observance of your thoughts instead of the agreement with your thoughts. If we agree with every thought that goes, on, goes through our mind, we're giving some form of physical and mental energy to those thoughts. But the more that you learn to observe thoughts, instead of just agree with every thought that goes through your mind, the less energy you give to it. And then like a, a cloud, it kind of passes through your mind and then it's on its way. And so it doesn't, cloud up your mind but when you agree with it it's kind of like you're, you're grabbing a hold of that that thing and you're kind of bringing it into your consciousness and so now it really crowds it feels like it's crowding your mindset so so just learn to let things go learn to observe and let them pass and if it's really important this is what i found if it's really important it'll come back around <laughs> i was listening to a uh, some of the new things that I've been playing with, I, I love words. I love, uh, I love articulating those words, teaching. I, I love writing. I love sharing. Like that's an art form that I really enjoy and playing with and just communication in general. And I was listening to Stephen King interview and he was talking about how he, he said, um, they said, what do you do? Do you, do you take, do you take notes and do you, do you write, do you write a lot of stuff down uh, like ideas and, and those sorts of things? And he literally said, no, I find that any idea I have to write down wasn't good enough to go in one of my books. He said, if I had to write it down and remember it, it probably wasn't good enough to be in one of my books. And I was like, damn, like, think about that. Like if it's really that good, that bad boy's going to hang out. Like, right. Like, like that thing, if that thing gets you stoked, 
then yeah, you're going to want, it's not going anywhere. If a thought goes through your mind, Mel, and you're fired up about that thing, guess what? It's not going anywhere. You ain't got to write that thing down. We ain't got to, it'll be right there. But if it's just random passing thoughts, we have to learn how to just let them go. And if it's really something powerful that's really going to uh, affect my life, it'll come back around. It really will. So uh, learn to let shit go. The uh, third thing we need to cut from our life is information. Um, information, uh, being on a low info diet is really powerful. We live in a time where information is more at our fingertips than ever. It is all around us. It is, we are continually being bombarded with, I'm just going to say it, bullshit. Some of it is cool. Like some of it, Kaylee is awesome. Like there's good stuff out there. But then there's also just a lot of bullshit. Every time I go anywhere, people are always talking about this whole COVID thing. And they're always like, well, and they're always spouting off a bunch of information. And I'm just really quick to remind them, like, you don't know that that's actually true. I've, heard, I've literally heard so many reports that contradict each other. And we're basically just choosing which ones. The best way, if you really want to get information, is find some people that are nonpartisan. That's hard to do. But if you can really find some nonpartisan information, then you can at least go, well, they don't really have any, any stake in the game. So they don't appear to anyway. And so maybe their information is correct. But guys, especially when you're talking about mainline news and things like that, low information diet is huge. I don't watch it at all. I choose to not watch the news. I don't have time. Again, I don't want to give energy. I don't want to invest my energy into negativity. I just, I'm just not going to do it. So if it's really that important, somebody's going to be talking about it. You will hear about it when you go through Facebook, one of your times that you have scheduled in your calendar, you'll hear about it. Or when you go out to Walmart or go out to the store, somebody's going to be talking about it. And one of the ways that's a great conversation opener, you can just go up to somebody and say, man, I haven't had a chance to, to watch the news today. Anything going on I need to know about? Bam. Now you've started a conversation. You met somebody new and you're getting told whatever it is that you needed to know from CNN that you is really nothing. So, uh, and so just low info diet is, is really powerful. And the biggest thing is we want to make sure we're stewarding or taking care of managing well, what's coming into our mind. This is huge. And I'm going to talk about the filter technique in a minute. Um, this makes room for creativity and imagination. It's a super important on a low info diet that we're taking the time. And if, and there's so many different meditation techniques. I'm going to be talking about a lot of these in the metaphysical mindfulness class that's coming up in September. We're going to be laying down so many different techniques. Some of them are just going to be like literally meditation for creativity, meditation to, to fire up the, uh, the imagination. It's not, it's not all Buddhist monk stuff, right? Or like some sort of Christian mystic stuff. It's literally really powerful tools that will uh just going to be amazing for your life so be looking for that uh right so the last thing i want to talk about he, well it's not the last thing i want to talk about but i i want <laughs> a couple other things i said i was going to get you out of here by eight so just hang on you guys all right if i go a few minutes over transition you guys know the transition again i have a youtube video on it i'm going to kind of elaborate upon it a little bit more uh, i i do this and this has been huge for me this has been huge for me. I literally will schedule, I, f I pick out three things that I need to get done that are important things for my why. Like why am I waking up? What's really important? What do I need to get done? And why am I doing that? And I find those things and then I break it down into tasks, right? So I then write down the tasks that are essential to making sure I accomplish those things. Now, I practice the transition rule, which is basically I take two minutes, approximately two minutes between every task. I get up. If I'm sitting at my desk, I get up. I'm, I'm loosening up, stretching out, doing some things, throw, throw some push-ups in, whatever, playing around. But then I'll literally take the time to release. 
And I literally say in my mind, release, release, and learn to let go of everything that I was previously doing. Even if I didn't get to finish that task all the way, complete it the way I might, and I might have to come back to it. And see, those are the worst because you actually carry that task into the next. And then what you're doing is your mind is really crowded again, and you're not able to give your real full attention and energy to the thing that's at hand. And that could be, again, that could be your children. It could be playing. It could be doing the thing that you're passionate about and you're not giving yourself fully to it because your mind's still so set on something else. So I release. I'm clearing my mind and I'm literally saying to myself, release, release, release. And then I'll picture in my mind, using my imagination, letting go of that thing. Like it's gone. And then when I really feel like I've just let go of the thing, I start to visualize the next task, the next thing that I'm going getting ready to do. If I'm going to go spend time with somebody, I'm visualizing the whole ordeal. I'm creating in my mind. I'm conjuring up the emotion that I'm going to feel when I see them or what we're going to experience. You know, the worst thing in the world is when you're getting off work and you're going home for people that got the, J or the old J-O-B and they carry their work into the home, right? And they're stressed out. I experienced that growing up my entire life. My dad would come home stressed out, yelling, upset, very on edge. You know, he wasn't mean or anything. He's just right on the edge of break the breaking point where he was going to scream at you. And you don't want that. You don't want to live that way. If you trans practice the transition and you let go of what you did. And now I can conjure up the joy of seeing my kids of embracing your, your lover of, of playing at the gym or of doing the yoga or of uh, sending emails or whatever it is that you have to do next. And I'm literally conjuring up those feelings. And then the third step is I choose. Once I get all those feelings in my mind, I'm feeling the natural endorphins being released because it's actually been from an, uh, a, 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 a neurological perspective it's actually been proven that if you picture it in your mind you use your imagination you actually see it you practice visualization that it's literally all virtually to your mind the exact same thing as doing it so you're actually re releasing all those same endorphins when i picture hugging laura wrapping my arms around her and hugging her and just holding her that actually produces the same thing when i tell you guys i'm holding you in my heart and i'm like vibrating over your health i'm actually seeing you and i'll sometimes picture just holding you and vibrating over you with that love and i've had so many people tell me man like silas i literally felt you with me like it was as if your presence was there and it's because we are all connected and so you can actually feel that you can it's very real and so when I'm done practicing the visualization, I literally like, I'm going to bring the joy now. I'm bringing um, the joy. I'm going to be on purpose now in this next task. and I'm embracing it. Everything, nothing else is with me. It's just this one thing that's before me in this one moment. And I'm going to be all in on it. That is mindfulness in a nutshell. That is mindfulness in a nutshell. And so it's learning to channel the emotion. Now I'm gonna slide through this next technique. It's the filter technique, which is really important for embracing uh, what is true and learning to not, uh, to live on that low info diet, to not allow just whatever shit to come into your mindset, which is really huge. I mean, you know, there's that passage of scripture, Jesus talks about this, the sower in the field. He said like, the guy goes out, the farmer goes out, the people go out and they sow good seed in the field. And then at nighttime, the enemy comes and he sows the tares in the field. Well, don't you know that it's typically at nighttime when your brain actually moves into those more uh, alpha, theta, and delta brain waves where it's really rece receptive to information. And don't you know that's typically when we're sitting down and we're just watching TV and we're just collecting all kinds of information, input, 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 and we're really receptive. The reason why the enemy came at night, the field is your mind. The, the sons of God are the, are the positive thoughts, sons of the devil are the negative thoughts, and the, uh, the enemy comes at night because that's when you're most receptive to the tares, to that information. So if you're growing a garden, you don't plant grass seed in your garden, plant that in your lawn. You plant cucumbers and vegetables and all that stuff in your garden. So... There's this passage of scripture in Proverbs that says, be, says to be diligent to guard your heart because out of it flows the source of life. Mm. 
what's going on? Again, how are you investing your time, your energy, your thoughts, your money? What are you bringing in? It's important, man. It's important to steward that. Be diligent. First thing that I do to make sure the filter, I practice every day for the filter technique is I bring the joy. And if I a repeat of what I just said, bring the joy. If I do a task and I don't really feel like I was channeling the emotion, the excitement for that task, then I didn't bring the joy. And that could be, so I started a business last year, a little side business just for fun, just a creative expression. And uh, it's Valentine Residential Services. And well, it got really busy. <laughs> And so I just kept raising my rates to make it next to impossible. You know, it's my, I, I just, I charge a lot now <laughs> and it's because I don't have the time to do all the work. And so it's just like, well, that's the cost. And if you really want the best, then I'll come help you. But the thing is, here's the deal. Um, I could be literally changing out somebody's toilet. I showed up to do this job. Brian, I'm sitting there. And I got to replace this guy's toilet. And I thought, you know, replacing toilets is no big deal. But I get there and there's this big turd in the toilet. And it won't flush. I plunged it. It wouldn't flush. And I'm like, I'm not going to spend the time and get the snake. I'm just going to go in and scoop the turd out the best I can. And during this time, like why this is happening, right? Uh, the guy comes up to me and he's like, he's like, so uh, what's your favorite thing to do? What are you most excited about? Like, what's, what do you specialize in? And I was like, well, right now it's taking care of your shit. It, right now, my favorite thing to do is fixing the toilet. And he's like, what? And they'll, you see, and I said, it's the thing that I'm presently doing that's always my favorite because I'm choosing to bring the joy to every task. Every single task that I'm doing, I'm choosing to bring the joy to. This is absolutely vital. Like, this is so important for us to bring the joy to everything that we do. And then what's happening is we're conjuring up this emotion in our imagination, in our mind, in our heart. And now, if you spend all this time in your heart with joy and you're oh, emitting you joy, joy, you know what ends up happening? You don't got room. You don't have any room in your heart for depression and the sadness and all the things that are going on in the world. So you walk through the store and people are all so frustrated and they're so irritated, especially now with all this cough that's going around. And, and you walk through the store and you're just beaming with joy. And I'm going to tell you, I've always stuck out like a sore thumb, but now more than ever, we stick out like sore thumbs. Like the sons of God, you're going to stick out. You, if you recognize your divine nature, you're going to stick out like a sore thumb. And so this is, this is super important. Bring the joy with every test. Second thing, invest your mental energy, your thoughts and your imagination in what is true what is true, this ultimate reality. So I'm not talking about your personal truth. I'm not talking about your personality truth. I'm not talking about your family truth. I'm not talking about your upbringing. I'm not talking about your, your, uh, your mental conditioning, your family conditioning. I'm talking about ultimately a reality, like that thing that's immovable, unshakable, that will always be there at the end of the day, the truth of what we, what we really are as one. Set your mind, give mental energy every single day, invest yourself in what is real. Invest your emotional energy in what gets you fucking hyped up. Invest your mental energy, Mel, in what gets you excited and what is lit. If it's not lit, why are we giving so much energy to it? Invest your energy in it. So here's the deal. All of these are positives because when I'm giving all my energy to what I'm stoked about, then I don't have all this other energy to give to the, to the negatives, to what people are saying about me or to what's going on at work. Like, well, my coworker, you know, my coworker, uh, Sandra, she was just being a bitch today. I ain't got time. I don't got no time for that. You know why? 
because like I'm giving my energy to what's getting me excited. I'm stoked about this thing and I'm giving my energy to this thing. And so I don't have time for the negativity. And so what's happening is the filter technique, the more that you practice this, the more that this stuff is naturally just being filtered through your mind. And when you hear stuff, I, I've said this to you before, Beth and I will be sitting there, we'll be watching some show or something and something will be said. It could be a commercial pop on or something. And just out of my mouth, just randomly out of my mouth and it doesn't matter. I could be full. My mind could be fully in neutral. Like I'm literally chilling. I'm not focused on anything. And out of my mouth would be like, that's bullshit. And she'll be like, what? I'll be like, that, that's but whatever just came on because I have this mental filter Mel, that doesn't make any room for negative stuff. I don't have room for negativity because I'm spending so much of my time, my energy, my money, investing in, in love, investing it in positivity, investing it in joy and in truth and in what is, what is real. I don't, have, I don't have time for that. And my mind has created this, developed this filter where if that negative stuff starts to try to come in, it literally just filters it right out, filters it right out. Uh, so invest your, invest, your time and your energy into good news into good news if it's not good news i'm not gonna listen to it. you can tell me what's going on in the world and we can turn it you know right now with the covid 19 stuff that's going on there are a lot of people that are like oh you know and I'll have customers and students and clients that'll come and they'll talk to me and be like, oh man, this is so bad and it's so rough. And I'll be like, man, how thankful, how cool is it though? It's only like the mortality rate is super low. Like how thankful are you for that? Like, that's awesome. And you know, most people don't even realize they have it. They, they, they really recover quickly. Isn't that awesome? Like this really, and, and they're, because they're watching a new source that's always focused on the negative side of things that's going on in their brain and that's being planted in their consciousness. And so as a result, what comes out of them is that negativity. The filter technique is designed to actually get your mind to be focused on what is good. If it's good news, meditate on this thing. But if you're watching Fox or CNN and these news sources, or any information, it doesn't matter, and you're just listening to the net, it could be your friend, it could be your lover, it could be your husband or your wife. Listen, if Beth's got a bunch of negative shit to say, I ain't listening. I literally will flip it around. She'll be like, well, so she, she has done this, not, not recently, but she'll be like somebody, one of her employees, oh man, they're just, oh my God, they're being so obnoxious and I don't even know what to, and I'm like, man, aren't that, they're awesome. You know what? I'm really thankful that they've, they've done this well. One real simple thing you can do, if somebody's being a pain in your ass, focus on one thing that they do well. One thing that gets you excited about their life. Why are you focused on the negative? Just focus on that one thing, right? Second thing, another thing, it li live, choose to live in authenticity and not fear. Focus, give your energy to authenticity and not to fear. And then I'm just going to start going through these things because of the time. Focus on what is pure. To the pure, all things are pure. Focus on what is pure. What, what is that thing that is, that is exciting to you, that feels right to you, that feels good to you? Focus on that thing. Give your whole being to love. At the end of the day, the number one thing that we all want is love. Give your being, your energy, your time, your money to love. Buy gifts for those that you love. Share your time with those that you love. Meet new people to love. It's all about love, right? It's all about love. Little things, little things. You're at the store, you see that thing on the rack, you're buying something for yourself and you see something and, you're, and it goes through your mind, man, so-and-so would love that. Grab it, grab it, give them a gift. Celebrate the people in your lives. Give your energy, your time, and your money to love. And then invest your mental energy in needed information, needed info. So if it's something, again, if it's something that I'm hyped about, I'm going to give my, I want to give my mental energy to the information that is centered around or that is leading me towards something that I'm hyped about, something I'm excited about. That's the information that I want to fill my mind with. So the more we practice the, the filter technique, the filter technique is something I've been practicing literally for 25 years, maybe, maybe longer. 
but consciously practicing because I remember reading Philippians 4 8. This is the filter technique. I remember reading Philippians 4 8 and it really impacted my life. Whatever things are good, whatever things are lovely, whatever thing is true, whatever thing is of good report, if there's anything, anything, anything lovely or, or praiseworthy, meditate on such things. And so I literally chose like these are the things I want to give my mental energy to, meditating on and focusing on. And I created this filter in my mind that literally would not give the time of day to other things. One of the reasons why I'm happy all the time, and I've been happy all the time for as long as I can remember, is this. I give you the filter technique. I created a filter where my energy and time, my thoughts, my money, my life was going towards, mindfully going towards what was good, what was lovely, what was pure, what was true. And I was not giving time or energy to anything else. And so eventually what happens is your mind is so used to the one thing that when something that, that is a negative tries to come into your mind, you're like, whoa, eh. it's kind of like I eat so clean, such a clean diet now that when you present me with like this lady, we had a big get together and like, I don't know, like 20 some people came out to our house and we had a big fire and just hung out. And this lady brought me some cake balls. I call them devil balls. They are amazing. And, and so I haven't actually had them in years. She made them for me one other time. She brought them out. And I put one in my mouth and I ate it. And it was so sweet. It was, and it was good. But it was so sweet. I'm like, oh. It was almost, oh. Because I eat so clean now, I couldn't handle it, right? I could only do the one. Before, before I developed the physical filter that says I, I cr that craves the healthy, the good for me, before I would have ate that whole fucking box, I ate the whole thing, right? I would have, Stephanie, I'd have been tearing up that entire, I would have eaten like 8,000 calories and cake balls the other night. But no, I developed this physical filter and you're doing the same thing with your mind. That's what the filter technique is all about. You're doing the exact same thing in your mind, okay? So what I've done so far in this last hour, approximately hour, I've given you a, a bunch of techniques to use that will increase your productivity. I promise you if you practice these things, even if you just do one of them, it will increase your productivity, it will increase your performance, and it will open you up to finding more time to do the things that you actually get hyped about doing. The things that you're excited about doing. This is what it's all about. Productivity is all about making room for what gets you hyped. If it's not if it's not stoking your flame, stoking your fire, if you're not stoked about that thing, no, you're not gonna make room for that. Don't make room for it. All right, so some daily accountability. I'm gonna pop a form up here for you. And here's some some questions I ask myself every day. And I actually rate these these things. So I rate them on a scale of one to five. My goal at the end of the day, obviously, to be a five. I'm going to be honest with you. And not very rarely is it a five all the way across the board. Matter of fact, some days I'm like, oh, shoot, like that was a two. But I look at my clarity. Am I aware of my why and did I live on purpose today? And this is huge. Why am I waking up? Why am I alive? Like, why? What gets me fired up? And when I'm aware of my why and I choose to consciously live that out, and then at the end of the day, I write, I, I literally will score it. Maybe it's a three, maybe it's a five. Energy. I invested my mental and physically, physical energy well today. I just spent an hour talking to you guys about the investment of your mental, and your physical energy. And, and so you can look at those things that we talked about and then just make make a score yourself. Did I invest that well? Did I really invest my mental energy? Well, if you were given your mental energy to what, what Susie says about you, what Kathy's got to say about you, then guess what? You're not investing it well. Productivity. Did you work on things that you're stoked about or that will lead to what you're stoked about? Courage. Did I express myself authentically today? Did I share my thoughts and feelings? 
I'll give you a little example of this. This is going to be a funny one. I was, uh, and I'll come back to the forum. I was sitting, literally, we were, the other night we went to a couple different uh, bar, the breweries, and uh, just hung out, did some live music venues with some friends. And a lady who has not been my biggest fan, and her husband came out, and she, she's not been my biggest fan in the past, but we get together on, on every once in a while. She likes Beth a lot, so she gets together with her, and she tolerates me. And um, she can't handle the positivity. She's, she's, she's one of the many that has often said, Silas, we, I know you're high on something, you're doing drugs, you're doing something, because no one's as positive and as happy as you are all the time. So she's one of the ones that stalks my social media accounts and all that stuff, never says anything, never likes anything, but she's always paying attention right and but so i'm sitting there and uh, her husband i said so man what's what's new been going on like like what's going on and he goes he goes oh it's pretty much the same old same old on my home and he goes yeah just been working i was like man do you enjoy it he goes i hate my work and i was like oh well why do you do it and he said he said well i mean the money's good and i said yeah yeah money's good in prostitution too i just don't like taking my ass and he, he goes, and I mean, he literally, like, he, he was speechless. He was 100% speechless. He just didn't know what to say. And I mean, it just, it authentically came out of me. It bubbled up. I'm just giving you an example of authentic, authenticity. I didn't, I didn't slow down and stop and think about, is this guy going to be offended? Is he not going to like it? I just was being me. That's, it just came out of my mouth. And I wasn't trying to be offensive. And then I, and then I literally encouraged him. And I was like, man, do you feel stuck? Like, cause you, there's ways out. Like there are ways out of this thing. You don't have to keep taking it in the ass all your life unless it's something you enjoy. Right, Kevin? Um, <laughs> so back to the, <laughs> back to the form, the daily accountability form. Again, this is at the, if you, if those in the master class, you can go over to the master, go to the link at the, at the website, lifeartistry.co. The forms are there. For those of you that are in the master class, if you have not already, um, filled out your set up your password and all that you still need to do that so courage joy choose to bring the joy to every task find your edge did I live on my edge today I ask myself every night did I bring the joy did I live on my edge am I living what is my edge I have this conversation I literally had this conversation a few weeks ago with Beth I was like what is my edge and she was like do you even have an edge I was like I got to have one I just gotta find it Finding that edge because you've got to continually stretch yourself, push yourself. I will often ask myself, what can I do today that'll make me uncomfortable? Finding what makes Silas uncomfortable, I'm going to be real with you, that's, tough. that's challenging. <laughs> what are you saying, Stephanie? <laughs> Shaking your head over there, pretty hardcore. It's hard. Beth, for, for me, it's really difficult to find my edge. And maybe you're like that, but I can still find my edge in very specific areas of my life. And I'll push myself to be uncomfortable just to make myself uncomfortable. And, uh, and then the last one is emotion. Was I emotionally invested today? Was I emotionally invested? And what we find is, guys, this is really important. If you're not emotionally invested, you're going through the motions. Emotion is huge in creation and in enjoying the, the playground that we're living on, this beautiful world this, that I call the playground. Emotion is huge. And the investment of your time, your energy, and your money plays a huge role in emotion. But learning to use your imagination to conjure visualization, imagination, meditation techniques to conjure up and to bring up that emotion is huge. Again, they're in the metaphysical mindfulness class course that, that starts in September. We're going to have a lot of techniques and a lot of beautiful things that are going to be awesome um, in helping you learn how to channel emotion so as to create and, 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 and uh, uh, form and play with stuff within your own self, others in the universe. It's going to be really beautiful. Emotion is one of the most important keys to life artistry. It is huge when it comes to life artistry. Emotion is huge. And so did I... Did I live? Did I really give my emotion? Did I invest myself emotionally today? It's a huge one. So I gave you a bunch of techniques. I hope you enjoyed them. 
Uh, for those of you, if you rolled on late, I saw some a handful of people roll on late. If you rolled in late, I wasn't going to do this, but you guys all know me. I'm a pushover. If you rolled in late and you want a recording of the event, message me or send me an email. Reach out to me, and I will do what I can to hit you up with a recording of the event. Okay. Um, for those in the master class, the recording will be put in the master class there. Uh, recordings. And uh, for everyone else, I'd love for you to check out, I'd strongly encourage you guys to check out the metaphysical mindfulness class that's happening in September. I think it's on, it's like 50% off right now until I think like 10 PM tonight. And then it goes off sale again and I might be running some sales here and there, but the metaphysical mindfulness class, it kicks off in September and um, it's 50% off right now. The course, it's going to be a 12 week in-depth course. And I'm telling you, man, I've been working on the syllabus and stuff. It's, it's going to be, it's going to be lit for real. It's going to be really powerful. You're going to, it'll really transform your existence. I promise it will. So I strongly encourage you to take a look at that. If you're in the master class, you're already included in that. So for those of you that are already in that master class, you are, which used to be mentorship for those of you who didn't know, but you are already 100% included in that course, that upcoming course. So Put a big smile on your face. Be excited about that. If for some reason you look at it and you and you look at it and you genuinely cannot afford the class, even at fifty percent off, if you can't afford it, there is a financial aid form on the website for you to check out. You can fill out that form, and we'll be in touch with you and see what we can not work out to make that happen for you. All right. I love you guys, man. Thanks for thanks for being here tonight. Our next, we have another um, course. Be on the lookout for that. If you don't already follow Guru of Chill on Facebook, follow follow that web page, my web page there, because um, that is there's a lot of information there about uh, upcoming events and things that we're going to be doing. New courses are going to be added on the reg, so we got I think four or five courses going through in the next year already up on the page. So check those out. I love you guys so much. You guys are all so beautiful to me, Brian and and uh mel so good to see you guys charlotte rick i love you guys so much it's so good to see you tonight i know you popped on late so i uh, love all of you you guys are so incredible so beautiful i look forward to the next time i see you guys i'll talk to you soon okay all right good night guys <laughs>